Coming to you live from a Walmart parking lot in a men's restroom, this is Thick Man Inc. And we are live here with your hosts, Tristan Kilgannon and ESPN featured athlete, Isaiah Ashley. Today, we're going to be giving you our breakdown and reaction to week four of the NFL season. A lot has went down. Like the video, subscribe, leave a comment what you thought about things we're going to be talking about. There's a couple controversial hits. And we're going to be starting off with the Saints-Cowboys game. Saints took down the Cowboys 12-10. to 10. And I'm going to start off by addressing what this game means for the Cowboys. The Cowboys offense was the talk of the league through three weeks. Kellen Moore was drawing up plays, making Dak Prescott look like an MVP candidate. And Zeke was actually playing. He wasn't down in Cabo. They did not play. And this was all against teams that were not very good. The combined rec for the team that played in the thir first three weeks is a whopping 2-10 and ten overall. First four weeks, like those four-week record. So their competition up until the Saints game was horrible. Dak wasn't forced into putting the team on his back at all. And when they play a stellar defensive line with the Saints, where they have Cam Jordan, uh, the rookie they traded up for last year, can't remember his name right now. They're not going to be able to run the ball. And then when Dak has to make plays on his own, he's just not able to do that. Well, you're ignorant in a whole lot of ways. Here's why. First of all, Dak Prescott did not play a bad game by any means. Had a 66% completion percentage. Had 223 yards, which would be way more than that, but I'll get to that later. And generally put the ball where it needed to be, despite being under immense pressure on almost every single play. The real reason the Cowboys lost there were two big fumbles, one on fourth and one by Ezekiel Elliott after he got past the uh, first down marker, and one on Jason Wynn where he's running completely free through the middle of the field and someone came up from behind him and punched the ball out. Without those two fumbles, Cowboys win this game easily. I don't think you can really blame Dak for that. He put his guys in position to succeed, and they failed. Zeke had 18 carries for 35 yards. That's not good at all. You don't want that from your premier $90 million running back. And the Saints may have one of the best defensive units in the game as we speak, so I don't think this is really that big of a deal. Well, when you're facing a backup quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater, who had a less than stellar game, under 200 yards passing, he was... He had threw an interception. No, no, no. I'll stop and you right there. He didn't throw an interception. He had the receiver tip the ball up, and it got intercepted after that. Still, he missed a few throws that could have gone for big yardage, and Teddy Bridgewater did not play well. And even if you're saying, oh, Teddy, you know, Teddy Bridgewater's all right, you're telling me Dak can't beat the Saints without Drew Brees. That's ridiculous. There's no excuse for – Dak, who's you know, they're arguing. He's arguing himself to Jerry Jones that he should be getting paid as much as Russell Wilson. And the Cowboys can't beat the Saints when the Cowboys are supposed to be one of the best teams in the NFC right now. When the Saints don't have Drew Brees, real quick, again, that's ridiculous. You realize Teddy Bridgewater had a seventy-six percent completion percentage, right? He was being very efficient and very effective with the throwing of the ball. He's the ultimate game manager. But Dak is supposed to be better than Teddy Bridgewater. Not game manager. 76% is Tom Brady. But he's the ultimate game manager because he doesn't make any big plays and he does exactly what the coaches at ask of him. He doesn't have and he doesn't have anywhere near that capability to put the Saints on his back. Well, you're ignorant. I'm glad Dak you're is supposed here. to be have Kamara that. also had I'm not ignorant. You're ignorant game, for arguing comparatively that. 70 carries, 69 yards, second week in a row with 69 yards. That's worth noting. That's a very impressive stat. At least you and I can agree that is very impressive, correct? That's nice. That very nice. But I think Teddy's underrated. He's been a starter before. He's not a terrible quarterback. He's not even a game manager. But finally. No, he's the – I'm not calling him a game manager. I'm calling him the ultimate so game, game manager. manager. You're missing that – you're missing that key distinction. That means he's, you know, he's, he's a little bit better than your average game manager. He's better than Kirk Cousins. You say that like it's a compliment. We'll get to that in a different <laughs> video. But – once I getting to the getting to the, I just have a quick comment. The Zeke fumble, I found that pretty funny because Jason Garrett always gets bashed for not taking risks, not going for it on fourth down, not giving it to Zeke up the middle, and then they go for it on fourth and two. Zeke gets the first down, 
but fumbles, and then the Saints get a field goal before half. That is – after that, Jason Garrett must have just been fucking kicking himself because, like, I finally go for it. I finally do what everyone in the media tells me to do, and then my guy fumbles. I find it very hard to believe Jason Garrett cares at all what the media says because after he's working in Jerry World. But I'll conclude my thoughts. I wouldn't panic if I was the Cowboys – you're still a top team in your division and a top team in the NFC. Saints, incredible game. You're doing great without Drew Brees. Teddy Bridgewater is going to reestablish himself this year and next year. Uh, I don't. I think this is games worrying for the Cowboys just because of the teams they beat don't aren't the best. I mean, they and the Eagles are going to be competing for. They're both going to have I think nine to twelve wins just because of how weak both their schedules are. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that matchup uh, uh, winds up at the end of the year with the records. And next game we got is the Chiefs Lions game. The Chiefs, up until the fourth game, were looking like clear favorites as leaders in the AFC. And then they ran into the Lions, a team I was very low on at the beginning of the year. Isaiah was very low on. And most people didn't have the Lions high in their projections. But they took the Chiefs all the way down the end. And the game wound up being 34 to 30. Uh, I'll note that you're acting like the Lions weren't undefeated to come into this week. Lions. I didn't say that. You, I was saying we underrated them on our the predictions Lions a little bit. But I will say this. How was I slandering I will say them? say this. The Chiefs played a real team this week. Patrick Holmes played debatably his worst game of his career, excluding his first start in uh, 2017, I believe. And he still had 315 passing yards and led the team to a game-winning drive. Patrick Mahomes is crazy. But the Lions defense, the Lions offense, Stat Padford, the greatest stat pattern in NFL history, they might actually be a real team this year. And you have to take – for the Lions, they were missing their best corner in top 10, top 5 corner of the league in Darius Slay. So if they have Darius Slay, are they able to put more men in the box and stop – uh, Mahomes from running because they basically played man to man across the board and made it harder for Mahomes to spread the ball around. Mahomes had six carries for 54 yards, so you have to wonder if they match up again. I mean, it's probably not going to be a Super Bowl matchup, so they probably won't match up again this year. But I think that would have played a bigger role in the game. And, and that I don't think one defensive player, regardless of the caliber, particularly a cornerback, would play that much of an impact against guys like. Uh, Good old Travis Kelsey and Sammy Watkins, who are good at getting away from those tough matchups, but I can see what you're thinking. Brief note here, the surprisingly athletic white guy moment of the week award goes to Travis Kelsey for a very impressive little catch and laterally add to LaShawn McCoy. You don't, you don't see, see that, see that out often. of a white guy every, <laughs> every so often. And Carryon Johnson had a phenomenal game. 26 carries, 125 yards. I think it exposed a weakness in the Chiefs' run defense. They they struggled greatly on pass defense and rush defense last year, uh, and the Lions exposed their rush defense. But I think the Chiefs showed this year that they're capable of rushing the passer. They got four sacks this game. They have 11 sacks on the season, much better than they were doing last year up to this point. Just quick note here, 11 sacks compared to someone – um, like individual players right now, eight sacks. Not saying they're a bad pass rush, but they're not exactly a world beating team. Either. It's better. It's better than they had uh, last year, and probably I think you know you won't that's... fully commit to that because you don't know the answer. <laughs> we will. Look I do not and tell you how wrong we are after the show. But moving on, we are going to talk about the Browns and Ravens. And briefly, I'm just going to say this. You people thought the running back was better than Maker Mayfield, didn't you? You thought Lamar Laxon was going to come in there and just torch the Cleveland Browns through the air and on the ground. You were wrong. He got outplayed by Baker. He got outplayed by Nick Chubb. Rex Ryan looks stupid right now. And I am back on the Cleveland Browns hype train. So my opinion on that is... The uh, Baker, the I don't Baker was not impressive, <laughs> in my opinion. The it was Freddie Kitchens simply making adjustments that helped the Browns win. They ran the ball, they actually handed the ball off to what's looking like a top five running back in the league in Nick Chubb. 
who had 20 carries, 165 yards, three touchdowns. They actually like, oh, that's we should do that. Baker had only 30 throws. He completed 20 passes, had a touchdown. Interception wasn't an inter, it was all on. Hold him. on, hold on, hold so on. He hold did on. not only 30, only 30 throws. You say that like it's not a big number. 30 throws is not, he completed 20 passes at 66 on 30 attempts. completion percentage. That's not – you're just acting like 30 passes is a lot of attempts. 30 passes is a good amount of attempts. Whatever. Nick Chubb carried the Browns offense. And the he had that – what was it? I think 88. 80-something 80 yard – 88-yard run. And that happened because Odell – they put a safety over the top on Odell, and they didn't have anyone to fill the run on that side fucking off to the races. So, I think Nick Chubb was the biggest piece of this game. It's worrying how bad the Ravens were at getting to the passer. But, like I said, that's because getting the ball out quickly. And the Browns, when uh, they wanted to throw it deeper, they, the Ravens didn't game plan well, and they only sent four. So, if the Ravens would have mixed more pressure in and like, got to Baker, I think the game would have been a different story. You're, I'm just going gonna, gonna to come back to this one more time before I move on. You realize Baker Mayfield had more yards on less attempts than Patrick Mahomes and Matthew Stafford, right? He had 343 passing yards. He did not have a bad game through the air. But. Yeah, but you – okay, to counter that, there were two or three receptions. They, they just threw a lot of screen passes to Nick Chubb and receivers That's, that game. <laughs> that was to counter the deficiency at the O-line. It doesn't take a fucking insane quarterback to throw a screen How many pass. times do you think Nick Chubb caught the ball for how many yards? He had three catches for 18 yards, but they also threw screen passes to the receivers, and they got the ball out quickly. That's how you have to win with Baker Mayfield. And I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback. I'm just saying this performance isn't what we expected based off of what he did I last I think year. you're absolutely wrong with that. I think you may not have watched the game. But Nick Chubb, very impressive I think you may have not paid attention enough to the game. Rex Ryan can't be feeling too good about himself. Hollywood Brown may demand a trade like his uh, cousin at Tony Brown. He keeps getting overthrown by Lamar Jackson. But we will have to wait and see about all that. The problem with Lamar Jackson – is he threw some nice deep balls? He just needs to be more consistent, and I think he's that's going to come with some time. Mm. Controversial statements here from the thick man headquarters, <laughs> but you know, Odell's probably not feeling so good after that. Eh, when you get choke slammed by someone named Humphrey, it can't be a good day. <laughs> that I, after, but it shows that he's growing as a person, you know, when it happened with Norman. That whole uh, Josh Norman Panthers and when he was on the Giants and they were getting into it, Odell tried to take Norman's head off. And, you know, he just let Humphrey choke him. He just let it happen. So good on him. Maybe he's into that. Moving on to another choking, we have the Rams somehow losing to the Bucks, 55 to 40. And on just to pause a segment, the Browns did not have their starting corners in Denzel Ward and Greedy Williams. So if the when the Browns and Ravens match up later in the year, if they're both healthy, it could be even harder for Lamar to pass the ball. Sorry enough as it's for Lamar to pass the ball, but moving on. So next we have the Bucks Rams biggest upset of the week. And Shaquille Barrett is looking like one of the, not one of the best pass rusher in the NFL right now. He dude has nine sacks through four games. I believe that sets some record for up. It's the most sacks through four games, tied with, like, Kevin Green and, I think, two other dudes. Tied with people who are better than him. All time, obviously. It's the first year this dude has done something. We are not uh, here to talk about defense votes. We are here to talk about famous Jameis Winston and his crowd blades and Jared Goff and his 68 passing attempts. We live in a when strange throw- world where the Buccaneers should be 3-1 and one if they had a kicker, and Jameis Winston is playing lights-out football and is probably the best quarterback in his division right now. These are indeed strange times. Now, the but no, the Buc- they lost to the Giants. What this game says is that the Rams are weak. They are suffering... And I think the reason they're suffering is because of their offensive line. They cannot run the ball like they used to last year with Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley, I think, is being affected by injury, but this is being amplified by their offensive line not being a block we- block as well, missing Roger Saffold. And I think they lost 
They lost another starter in the offensive line from last year because of the big contracts they signed. We don't care about so I think like that, though. <laughs> That's a takeaway for the Rams. Way with the Bucks blowing out the Rams. This means that the Giants are not I'm going to hang up this team. phone if you keep <laughs> talking about the New York Giants. That's the, your one pass. Go back to the Rams. The Giants. The Giants. They – they could beat the Rams, and the Bucks took down the Rams. You're aware so equivalent you gotta exchange t- doesn't work in the NFL, right? It works 100. Per- no, there's nothing. Matchups have nothing to do with it. Back to a relevant topic. Jared Goff threw the ball 68 times. I'm pretty sure that's tied for some record. It's way up there. And if you're not named Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady, you should not be throwing the ball 68 times. McVay put him in a terrible spot. I don't know what he's doing with Gurley, whether he's still in rehab or McVay wants to save him for the playoffs, which could be a smart move. But if you don't beat the Bucks, you don't make the playoffs. Well, Todd Gurley has arthritis, which doesn't go away and you can't really rehab from. So it just comes down to Todd Gurley not being as efficient. And as I previously stated, the run blocking being severe, not as nearly as good as it was last year. You may be right. I think they, if there is an organization in the league or any or any medical stuff which can be done, it's being done. The progression of the arthritis is likely being slowed at least, so it shouldn't be this far away. But fine, I'm just going to throw this in there. The Lions and famous Jameis could conceivably both be wild card teams for the NFC. That's how this year's looking. I don't I don't agree with you on the Bucks. I mean they're two and two. We'll have to see how it turns out. NFC South has looked pretty horrible, so anything can happen. Now moving on to a team or to a game that had pretty fucking horrible quarterback play on both sides of the ball. Tom Brady was eighteen for thirty nine. Rumor on the streets has it that he's been dealing with an injury. Josh Allen was thirteen for twenty eight with three interceptions. Uh, Matt Barkley came in from later in the game when he got injured and threw an interception. So not a great game to watch if you're looking for a passing attack. Hey, pretty good secondary play, though, and good pass rush all around. It was a good defensive I battle. mean, if you get a hard-on for defenses, this is definitely the game for you. That or the Saints. Game. Top two defenses in the league. But this was not exactly a great game for a lot of reasons. Least of which being Josh Allen got hurt, but we'll get to that later. Patriots got away with something which they shouldn't have. They snuck away with a win thanks to a special teams touchdown. And they almost lost to the Buffalo Bills. And if I'm in Foxborough, if I'm Belichick, if I'm Brady, if I'm insert your rich white person in that organization, I'm panicking right now. Because they got taken down to the wire by a backup quarterback and Josh Allen's combined efforts. I mean, Josh uh, Josh Allen is glorified, glorified Blake Bortles once again completing less than 50% of his passes while throwing for three interceptions. And it's the one game every year where Brady doesn't look – where Brady looks his age. And the Bills are so well coached that they're able to hang in the game with their running attack. They have the second-best defense – Unfortunately for them, the Patriots have the best defense in the league, but it it just came down to defense. Stop you there. I think you're wrong about the defensive thing. But once you get past Josh Allen's first quarter, he has one for eight with two interceptions. I'm not going to defend that. That was terrible. But at the same time, that happened when the Patriots play Patrick Mahomes. Belichick is really good at game planning against young quarterbacks and making them turn the ball over early. As the game progressed, he looked better, making some completions. Got himself a little touchdown, was driving down the field, score was a whopping to 10. 13 completions score was on the game. 16 to 10. And as he drives, he takes off from the pocket, starts doing a little scramble action, a little slipping and sliding, is being tackled. Then some surprise drain damage comes at him. A fellow by the name of Jonathan Jones, who I'd hazard a guess, most people who are watching this have no idea who it is, comes in clear helmet to helmet sends Josh Allen back in time back to the 2000s where that type of hit was legal has to exit the game of the concussion and the Bills lose all their momentum I'm upset I I don't think that was a dirty hit especially when you can 
pair it to the Vontez Burfitt hit, which we're going to talk about in a minute or so, the Josh Allen was running. He was trying to get the first down because that's all I can do. He's a, basically a running back who throws it a few times a game. He's running for the first down. He stays up. He's not protecting himself. Tom Brady said he's not taking that hit because he's soft. he doesn't need to take that hit. And Josh, he, Josh Allen put himself in danger. The uh, Jonathan, whatever the fuck his name Jones. is, came in. Was Jonathan Jones was going for the hit. I don't think he was aiming for the helmet. He went and made sure he apologized to Allen after the game, wanted to know if he was okay. I think it's clear that he it wasn't intent his intention to Well, here's him. a dealio. And it's just that. a bad play we have by another Josh scenario Allen. where I question if you even watched this game. Because Josh Allen was going down. The tackle had already been made. His head was I, moving towards the ground. His feet had stopped. The tackle was in progress. He was not going to gain any more yardage. And Jonathan Jones comes in, lowers his helmet, a clear crown of the helmet to Josh Allen's helmet, and lays a hit on him. I hope the next time the Bills play the Patriots, there is a screenplay called where five offensive linemen come out of the backfield and instead of blocking for the wide receiver, take turns falling on Jonathan Jones. This type of play is disgusting. This was by far the worst hit of this Sunday. And with that, you we are, are going you to are, transition Devontae. You, no, 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 no. You are on crack if you think he was already being tackled. I'm and was sorry, a defenseless, I watched. And was game. it? No, 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 let me finish. Feet had stopped, I, I falling to the, the ground. Too. Helmet down. He's, he, well, we're going to be letting this play on the screen for our loyal viewers. But he's running down the middle of the field, is, gets ta- is getting tackled from behind. He is basically dragging the tack the tackler and the Jonathan Jones comes in and hits him while he's still both feet are touching the ground so that is not a dirty well, hit and you I think of that is dirtier than the, the power of YouTube I can very confidently say that in fact both of his feet were on the ground but so is one of his knees he's but still we will running throw it when... on the screen for you viewers we obviously disagree, so we are going to let you decide in the comments down below. That seemed fair. So, yeah, let us know what you think. I'd, appre- I'd appreciate on this one. And let us know what you think this hit compared to the Vontez Burfitt hit. The Vontez Burfitt hit, in my opinion, was disgusting. The way he hit him, the way he celebrated after. Jack Doyle Real quick, stop was- there. Jonathan Jones also celebrated afterwards. Continue. He did not celebrate afterwards. <laughs> But continue. not in the not in the way Vontez Burfitt celebrated. I don't think not in the same way. But Vontez Burfitt, fly, uh, Jack Doyle is going to the ground. Vontez Burfitt flies in helmet to helmet, knocks him out, and then flexes on him and is smiling. He's happy about the hit. So I think we'll play this on the screen also for you guys. I think the um, suspension is warranted. He's been suspended 13 and fined 13 other times. I think it's crazy that anyone else thinks otherwise. I think it was clearly not a great decision for him to lower the helmet into that. But at the same time, you can't exactly sit here and say, like, oh, the play is already over or, oh, that play's dead. The tight end caught the ball and was getting ready to start going forward. He is a clear threat. If Vondes (sighs) Murphy leans off him, That could easily be 10 to 15 yards right there. That is just not true. The dude, he's basically on his knee. The only way for him to go is fall over on his ass. He can't fall over forward. Otherwise, he's fucking hurting something else. And then Vontas Burfitt comes in. It looks like he's aiming for his head. You know, he could just let him fall over and touch him. But no, you got to well, make the play. Well, he was standing take up. Take his fucking head he off. He was in the process of he, doing that. Again, I'm not saying he it was, was a clean hit. I'm just saying you can't exactly dive under him. You have to put some type of contact on him in order to ensure that he does not get up and torture for a big gain. The contact was clearly excessive, but there was a need for contact. See, I just I don't think he's in the process of standing up at all. I think he's. He's in an awkward position with his knee. He had to squat down. His knee was basically touching the ground when he caught the ball, and he had to kind of fall backwards if he's going to 
land comfort. Look, he's fl- he's flipping his leg out from underneath him when the play happens. So in the process so, of standing up. Look, no, there it needs to be some contact because even if you don't, you let him fall to the ground. He is still technically in play. He can still get up and run the ball. These aren't college rules. If he decides, hey, I'm going to fall on my back and get up and run, he's still a receiver. Okay, the play, he catches the ball. He's on one knee. He gets hit when his back is almost perpendicular to the ground. So he's in the process of falling down, and Vontez fucking cleans his clock. I'd say perpendicular is hyperbole because I'm also watching this clip now. It's much closer I said almost to 90 perpendicular. than a parallel. No, nah, it's no, it's yes, not. It we'll, we'll, you know, we'll we'll put a freeze we'll put frame a up on the screen for you guys. Here. Yeah, for those of you who like, for math. those of you who love maths. But we're gonna let you in the comment section decide that one too. I think the Josh Allen hit far worse. He thinks Avante's perfect. <sighs> I completely You're disagree. Completely wrong, and it's okay. Disagreement it's is okay, what you know, makes Dick Manique a sensational YouTube channel. We're special. We're sensational. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys all for watching. Let us know, especially on the Vontez Burfitt and Josh Allen hits. Which one do you think was dirtier? Is Vontez Burfitt's 12-game suspension, given his history, worth it? Do you think he'll ever play in the NFL again? Like the video, subscribe, and tune in next time.